I'm Victor Espinosa, and I ride Harley Aces in the TVG Pacific Classic. Watch TVG Saturday. It's Hard Aces as they run to the wire in a thriller, very close. We've been talking about the million dollar grade one TBG Pacific Classic. We'll continue to do so and we're joined right now on the telephone by a trainer who's going to be represented by not one but two horses in the Pacific Classic and that is John Sadler. John, thanks for joining us for a couple of minutes here on horse racing today. Good morning. Let's start with your horse on the rail. Here's the, here's the new shooter, class leader who has never raced in Southern California before and was last seen on the track on July 18th. How long have you had him out here in California? I've had him approximately about three weeks. Um, came in from Churchill Downs and Neil Howard. Um, looks like, you know, the thinking is that there's some room in this division out here, and it looks like he wants to run a little further. If you look at his pedigree, a mile and a quarter should be right up his alley. So he's out here to give it a shot in the Pacific Classic today. John, when you get a horse like this from a from a trainer like like Neil Howard, what kind of uh, what kind of run up do you want to do on the horse? Do you talk to the previous trainer? Do you talk to the owner? Do you look at races on tape, or do you just trust what your eyes and your hands are telling you? Um, and I talked to Neil Howard a lot about this horse. Um, he's a great communicator, and, and we had quite a few telephone conversations. And he told me all the things he'd been doing with the horse and his you know his, his personality and everything like that. And then once I have once I have that, then you know my job is to put my own touch on them um, for the things I want to do without really disrupting all the good work that's been done in there. So uh, it's kind of a combination of, of both. And so I got him here and we trained him and I put him on a little work pattern. I had time for two works. I wanted to go, you know, a nice five to see how he handled the track. He came out of that good and then go further on the next work because he's going to run a mile and a quarter. And he went better the second week than the first week. So I think he's acclimatizing well in California. And I'm looking forward to running him this afternoon. Yeah, both of those works look uh, very strong on paper. Is there anything in particular that has impressed you about this this individual? Well, just just that he he's uh, he's a really grand looking horse, um, and he wants to run all day. I mean, you know, he's he's not speedy. You know, there's no question about that. He's going to be one of the horses in the contingent of horses coming off the pace. Um, but he's got a good temperament, and we're, I think I've got a, you know, big race rider on him. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how it goes this afternoon. Let's shift gears and talk about the proven commodity. That's Hard Aces, who's coming off a win at Santa Anita in the Grade One Gold Cup. Now you added the Blinkers two back, and it, it kind of counterintuitive. We always expect that Blinkers are going to improve a horse's speed, but despite wearing Blinkers, Hard Aces went last to first to win the Gold Cup. What was your thinking when you made the equipment change with Hard Aces? Was it a focus issue, or was there something else you were trying to accomplish? Well, a little bit of a focus issue, but also, that being said, he's a really lazy horse. <laughs> uh, he doesn't like to work fast. Um, when you ride him in the afternoon, you know, he's, he's uh, Victor, I, I told Victor, and, and Victor will concur, he's like riding a bike, you know, you've got to keep pushing on him. Uh, so we thought, you know, Victor wrote him one time, so well, maybe blinkers will help a little bit. So I don't think the blinkers are, are maybe a real reason for him to improve. I think mean, Victor's got to know him over the course of two or three rides. Um, I got him a little quick before the big cap, and so he ran fourth it there. And then didn't go. things didn't go right in Oakland. But since then, he's come back with two really strong races. And hopefully, he's going to have to have his best race today um, to have a chance to win this one. Very steady work tab for hard aces down there at Del Mar. We heard a lot when they were installing this, the, the new dirt track down there, that they were using the same dirt that they use at Santa Anita. Do you find that the surfaces are comparable? Does hard aces seem to like the Del Mar dirt as well as the Santa Anita? I think, I mean, the, we, we know 100% the materials are the same because the, the, when I talked to Dennis Moore, and he says this is the same material that we have at Los Alamitos and Santa Anita. So it's more of a question of, of how this track out here is being maintained, the different environment, temperature, um, and how they're, um, you know, how they're working on it on a daily basis, water, et cetera. So um, he's doing fine over it. I think it's actually an advantage to have a few works over it. I think horses, you know, need to train over it for a while to get good over it. It's a brand new surface, and you've seen some, you know, don't love it, and, and you've seen some that'll approve on it. 
We're talking to John Sadler, who will be represented by class leader and hard aces in today's million dollar grade one TVG Pacific Classic. John, one last question about the, the way that the race figures to unfold. Both of your horses in here are deep closers. Does that mean that you need some help up front or going a mile and a quarter? Is that not as much of a concern? I don't know. I'm going to need help up front. There's no question about that. Um, it looks like, you know, I mean, the old proverbial, um, it looks like there's speed on, you know, on, on paper. So we just hope it materializes that way. Um, you know, they, they don't have to be way, way back, um, but they, they want to close into some fractions. So, so I hope that some of those, a couple of those horses will, um, you know, set, set a decent pace. I think Midnight Storm has to run one way. And I think Bayard, you know, Bayard's not going to run well if he has to come off the pace. So I think those two horses are the most logical horses to be in front. We, we've all been hearing for a long time that Dick Mandela had his eyes on this race for beholders. So certainly it was no surprise for, for you when you saw that she was in the field. Uh, do you reckon that she's one of the, the key contenders? Or are you surprised to see her trying this spot? No, I mean, I, I think everything that's been written is, is accurate. I mean, it's not a bad time for them to try her. It's probably her last year of racing. She probably has two races after this. Uh, so it's, it's a good time for them to try it, take a shot at something a little different. She's been dominating the Bears out here for years. So, um, you know, and then she's had a lot of stops and starts. So, I mean, I think, you know, when they've got her good and right, you know, I don't think they really have the option of, of – you know, waiting for this or that. If she's good, she's probably should go right right today. So, I, like I said, it, it adds a lot of flavor to the race. It's a great story to Philly going to get the boy, um, no question. So it'll, it'll make for an exciting race today. And it's a very evenly matched race. You know, I looked at the, the speed figures. Um, you know, there's a lot of horses that can win this race, no question. I think you can't overlook Red Vine. Um, you know, it's got good numbers. Um, so it, it's a good, good, very contentious race. Uh, John, I want to wind back to the first race on the program for our viewers and players who are going to be involved in the, the pick five out there. You've got a horse called Skelton Pass in the maiden special weight uh, opener today. And there's a horse you took out of a maiden claiming event for 62,500. Off the top of my head, I can't think of another trainer in Southern California who claims so aggressively out of the, the high level maiden claiming races there basically nobody's claim proof in one of those races as long as you and mr Hronis are around <laughs> oh that's kind of what i do we've had great luck we we, we played a little silly called ayatapa for fifty thousand. First first time out she made a million dollars that third of the breeders cup we sold it for 2.8 million dollars <laughs> um i've played a lot of stakes winners um you know and, and, and i've had some mistakes you know at, at those high those high maiden claimers but you know, you've got you really have one chance at them uh, a lot of times. So I jump in there from time to time, and, and sometimes we get lucky. All right, good luck with Skelton Pass, John, and very good luck with uh, with Hard Aces and Class Leader in the TVG Pacific Classic. And thanks for your time this morning. All right, Rich, take care. All right, that's John Sadler.